Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com on Roku, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News for our podcast, DwyerBoxingNews.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, there's big news in the world of boxing, and I mean big news. Understand a coup right now is taking place. The final step will be up to a boxer in the ring. If I were to ask you right now to name me the big names in boxing, in the promotional business in the United States, right? We're not going to talk about K2 and Saraland and all of those groups. Um, just here in the United States the biggest promotional outfits. Many of you would immediately say Golden Boy and Top Rank, right? Golden Boy and Top Rank have ruled the roost for a while, right? Some others might say main events belongs in the conversation, right? Still some others might point to Mayweather promotions on the way up. Well, understand there's been a deal reached between Gary Shaw and Sean Carter's group, Rock Nation, Sean Carter is Jay-Z, right? That really threatens to topple the balance of power. It really threatens to be a paradigm shift in the sport, right? Understand, later this year in New York City, Rock Nation fighter, and he is a Rock Nation fighter now, Brian Jennings is set to challenge the heavyweight champion of the world. With all due respect to Bermain Stavern and Deontay Wilder, I believe most of us know that the heavyweight champion is Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Just understand that if Brian Jennings can pull the upset in that one fight, then Rock Nation is going to go from being a new promoter, right, started in 2013, to having the heavyweight champion of the world, right? That one fight could swing things greatly. Understand right now in the United States, the heavyweight division is practically a wasteland. Right? We, you know, really are straining here to pub people like Deontay Wilder. Well, in my opinion, right, given that Tony Thompson now is a little bit older, right, and has had some problems, lost to Carlos Tackham by a wide margin, right, an argument can be made that Brian Jennings is America's top heavyweight. Now, let me say this. Based on his lackluster, let me underline that word, lackluster performance in the early rounds against Mike Perez. I'm picking against Brian Jennings in this fight. But Brian Jennings has an unusually long reach. Brian Jennings can move around the ring. He's one of the heavyweight division's better athletes. More importantly, Ryan Jennings is a combination puncher. He can throw punches in bunches, and that's rare in this heavyweight division that's filled with big right-hand guys like Deontay Wilder and one-two guys, guys who soften you up with a jab and then throw a big right hand like Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Klitschko, Deontay Wilder, they're home run hitters. They're not guys putting together combinations. Now, let me say this, right? I do view Klitschko as vulnerable. I do view him as beatable. I don't think Ryan Jennings beats him unless Jennings changes up a few things. Let's talk about it. I believe there are a few fighters out there who have given or could give Vladimir Klitschko a hard time, right? Guys who can be long out of southpaw stances, 
right, and who can play angles games out of southpaw stances. Tony Thompson in the first fight against Vladimir Klitschko. I keep telling people, watch that fight. I don't care what the judges were scoring or what have you. I don't care how it ended, right? Just listen to Emmanuel Stewart in Klitschko's corner and watch that fight. Klitschko was baffled. He was having problems with Tony Thompson. Quite frankly, Thompson should have lifted the heavyweight title that night. Right? I believe Tony Thompson, that long southpaw style, gave Vladimir Klitschko all he can handle. That's why I feel Tyson Fury, who's ambidextrous, who can fight you in a long southpaw style, right, behind a right jab, and who can move around the ring and who also can get up close on you and keep in mind it's too tall for Klitschko to treat him like he treated Alexander Povetkin, I believe that southpaw style could give Klitschko all kinds of problems. I don't think Klitschko would be able to land his jab, his left jab, with any kind of regularity. I believe if you look at the Thompson rematch, you're going to see Klitschko open up in a way that's uncomfortable for him. Understand, when Klitschko opens up, in my opinion, his defensive construct goes south, right? Vladimir Klitschko has been down on the canvas in multiple fights, right? A good fight to see Klitschko on the canvas, right? To get a gauge on Klitschko's punch resistance. And it's a fight he won. I'm not talking about the Lehman Brewster fight, where he just drops out of exhaustion, it looks like. Look at the Sam Peter fight where Klitschko is on the canvas multiple times, right? But you have to get Klitschko out of his construct. Now, Brian Jennings is not a southpaw. He can't do what Tony Thompson did. He can't do what I think Tyson Fury could do to Vladimir Klitschko, right? So he's going to have to fight a different fight. I believe a guy who had the right idea on how to fight Vladimir Klitschko was David Hay. Right now, I know Klitschko won that fight. Understand, David Hay is a little bit different than Brian Jennings. David Hay hits harder, in my opinion, than Brian Jennings. I don't think we give Hay enough credit for his punching power. David Hay is the kind of guy who can take you out with one punch. Right? Don't get me wrong. He'll hit a guy, the fight will be over, right? The guy will be semi-conscious. Then Hale will step in and empty the gun. But if you look at the Enzo Macarinelli fight, right, you're going to notice that when David Hay hits you, you look at the Derek Chisora fight, when David Hay hits you, the world changes, right? David Hay is a home run hitter, right? He has fast hands, but he's really looking to land one big shot. But what David Hay did right, and David Hay, because of that home run hitting, didn't hit enough singles against Vladimir Klitschko. In other words, he was too low volume, right? He's in the ring. He's throwing big shots. He just wasn't throwing them often enough. Another problem with David Hay is, like Vladimir Klitschko, he doesn't go to the body. David Hay is primarily a headhunter. Right? But keep in mind, David Hay in that fight showed a lot of head movement, folks. A lot of head movement. Hay's head is on a swivel. Understand, too, David Hay goes 12 rounds with Vladimir Klitschko, and it's not a clinch fest. He doesn't go 12 rounds by hugging Klitschko to death. There aren't the number of clinches in the Alexander Povetkin fight. David Hay's moving around the ring. He's alive for 12 rounds. This is the fight where Hay had a bad toe. He's not even moving as well as he could have moved had his toe been healthy, right? And understand, he's able to get off power shots. Now, Vladimir Klitschko, a few times in that fight, is able to just block the shot, not by trying to block the shot on the way in, but by putting a glove up to his chin because he knows the parts of his body that he needs to protect. 
Now, if Brian Jennings can just fight the kind of fight that Alexander Povetkin fights against most people, except when he fights Vladimir Klitschko, right? I believe Povetkin left an opportunity on the table there. If he can move around the ring like David Hay did, dodge Klitschko's jab, Start faster than hay. You have to get out the gate fast. Understand, too, the Jennings fight would be in New York City. The crowd is there to be had. Right? If Jennings could get out the gate fast and can just flash some combinations, in other words, if the round is slow, if he's staying outside dodging Klitschko's jab, if he can then, in ambush style, just jump in and let his hands go. Throw some combinations, right? Don't go for the home run like David Hay went for. Rather, go for the Sugar Ray Leonard type combination. If he could just jump in, time an entry point where he's not hit with the jab, move too much for the robotic Klitschko to time him, right? Then jump in, let his hands go, and swing back out. If he could make the fight episodic and jump in at angles so Klitschko can't grab him, then he'd have a shot. The problem, though, there's not a lot of margin for error. Klitschko showed us against Kubrat Pulev that he can lead with the power left hand and take you out. Right? If Klitschko lands once, you're going to be on Disneyland Street. Right? So Jennings is going to have to get the crowd and the judges on his side early. Fight an ambush fight where he's letting his hands go. Stay in the middle of the ring and hover. He can't allow himself to be up on the side of the ring. He can't give away the early rounds like he did against Mike Perez. He has to win the early rounds. He has to let his hands go. He has to come in at angles and throw flurries and then get back out of there. Right? If, as the fight goes forward, right, he finds Klitschko starts to wilt. Right? He finds Klitschko starts to slow down. My recommendation is that he avoid the fate of Billy Kahn, right? Kahn had Joe Lewis beat. In fact, that's the model. He needs to fight a Billy Kahn fight. He needs to avoid trying to knock out Klitschko. And he needs to just literally keep doing what he's doing, right? If Billy Kahn didn't decide to KO Joe Lewis, he would have lifted his title. Right? Don't give a big puncher like Vladimir Klitschko any chance to close the show. Klitschko KO'd Eddie Chambers in the 12th round. That eminent threat of danger is there every minute of a Klitschko fight. He still has power late. So Brian Jennings really, in preparing for this fight, needs to be prepared to move. Right, needs to be prepared to jump in, get off some body shots, let both hands go, throw a combination. Then he needs to get out of dodge. He can't stick around. Right, pile up the points. Figure out how to acknowledge the crowd. Wave your hand. Right, just just look at how Ray Leonard would get the crowd on his side. Right, figure out how after a round where you do well to flex muscles to the crowd or let the crowd know right that this is your night that the judges are not gonna take it away from you right if Jennings can do that rather than get caught up in the hype of it being a heavyweight fight and rather than being afraid to exchange with Klitschko because Klitschko's heavy-handed he's the bigger man he's the heavyweight champ 
and we've seen guys get drilled by Klitschko and stopped, right? Kubrat Pulev, just the last fight, right? If Jennings instead makes it a game where it's episodic for him, he's just a jitterbug, dancing around the ring, getting in, letting his hands go, right? Throwing punches, not letting Klitschko grab him. If Klitschko grabs him, Jennings has to demonstratively posture to the judges in the crowd, right? In other words, he's in, he lets his hands go. Klitschko grabs him. He should lean both hands back and look around outraged. He has to practice those facial expressions. If he can bring that kind of activity, movement, and charisma into the ring, he has a chance to deliver to Rock Nation their first world heavyweight champion. Right? So pay close attention to this fight. Because right now, let's face it, Rock Nation's just starting out. They don't have that crown jewel part of their empire yet. Right? They don't have a Mayweather. They don't have a Pacquiao. Right? They don't have a Vladimir Klitschko. Right? When Brian Jennings faces Klitschko, they'll have an opportunity. I like Klitschko in the fight. I think what's going to happen is Jennings is going to get in the fight like a lot of guys. You remember um, Eddie Chambers was, you know, there against Vladimir Klitschko trying to look tough early. Then he started getting hit with a sledgehammer of a jab. Then he started getting hit with hard punches. I'm expecting another Eddie Chambers type fight. And keep in mind, Eddie is fast Eddie Chambers. He has fast hands. I'm expecting that kind of fight. Right? I'm not sure if Jennings has the sense of movement and timing that, let's say, a David Hay has. Right? The problem, though, is, hey, it's all, I'm in throwing a big punch. Right? We need a little bit different. We need... I jump in, I throw a combination, I get back out. Right? I jump in, I throw a combination, big guy tries to lean on me and tie me up. Right? David Hayes' solution was Andre Durrell's solution against Carl Froch to just go to his knees. Right? You need a different solution. Right? You need to make the crowd know, why isn't the champ here to fight me? Right? You need to avoid getting tied up. You need to come in throwing your combinations with an arm bar or with elbows to prevent the other guy from tying you up. Right? Take a look at Floyd Mayweather against Ricky Hatton. That's an interesting fight. Right? Ricky Hatton comes inside thinking that if he gets inside and turns it into a wrestling match, things are going to be in his favor. Then he finds out that the consummate boxer Floyd Mayweather knows how to use his elbows inside. Right? We need to see some elbows from Brian Jennings. You're fighting a taller man than you. You need to go to the body. Right? You also need to play games on your entry point. It has to involve a lot of feints. When you look at David Hay, when you look at really his mentor, We'll call him a de facto mentor because I believe, hey, copy this guy's style. When you look at Roy Jones Jr., right, prime Roy Jones Jr., not Dennis Lebeda of Roy Jones Jr., right, when you look at prime Roy Jones, as fast as he is, you don't know when he's going to come inside in his best fights, right? He's hinting of coming inside. There are a lot of feints involved, right? I would encourage... Brian Jennings to look at Roy Jones films. I would encourage Brian Jennings to look at Billy Kahn against Joe Lewis. I would encourage Brian Jennings to look at Sugar Ray Leonard against Marvin Hagler. Right? He needs to be ready to move. He needs to be ready to flurry. He needs to be ready to avoid the big punches. He can't wait in the fight. He needs to bank early rounds because I got news for you. When you're fighting a consensus heavyweight champion, people are expecting you to have to beat that guy to take his title. 
You can't fight the kind of photo finish fight that you did against Mike Perez and expect the judges to give you the decision. Right? That's not how it works in the heavyweight division. Let me hear from you. And I know the George Foreman fans right now are saying, what about the Tommy Morrison fight? Fair enough. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. You want to circle the date for Brian Jennings against Vladimir Klitschko. Understand, it's more than just a contender going up against the established heavyweight champion. It's actually a new promotional outfit, right, that's not linked to Golden Boy or Top Rank. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.